In the name of Jesus, amen. Jesus forgives sin. He forgave the sins of his disciples. He forgives your sins. He goes to his very much afraid disciples on that first Easter evening. He isn't in that locked room to drudge up past sins. He isn't there to scold them. He's there to forgive them. He's there for forgiveness. He's there to send those weary disciples, now apostles, to dole out to the world all that he's accomplished in his death and his resurrection. Jesus forgives sin. He doesn't say to Peter, why did you deny me when you swore you wouldn't? He doesn't say to Thomas, get with the program, buddy. He doesn't say to all of them, save John, where were you? You weren't there when I needed you the most. No. He says, peace be with you. Look at my hands and my side. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Jesus knows his own dear ones. He told Peter that he would deny him three times, and Peter did it, even though he said he never would. He told the disciples they would all forsake him, and all but one did. One even betrayed him to his death. He knows that what paralyzes you too is your sin. He knows that just when you say you won't do it, you'll do it. That favorite sin you love and hate, he knows. He knows you. I know what you're thinking. Your ears don't want to hear the law that exposes your doubt and fear to trust God and walk in his ways, to let go of your sinful thoughts, desires, words, and actions. You don't want to hear that God's design for sex is so often in conflict with your flesh and its desires. You don't want to hear that not letting go of that grudge is evil, that if God forgives you, you should forgive also. You want to pretend that closing your ears to your parents and others whom God puts in your life to care for you really is no big deal. What do they know? Yes, you prefer to be dead in your sins and yet call that living. Sinner that you are, you'll justify yourself in your sins until the day you die. You'll lock the doors and throw away the key. You'll tell mom and dad they're wrong. They just don't get it. They don't get you. You tell the church and your pastor... Mind your own business. Then you cover it all with false piety, telling yourself that Jesus says we shouldn't judge. You don't want your sins drudged up, but you'll happily drudge up the sins of others. Repent of all that. That's death. Locking the doors and hiding behind your fear like the disciples, that's death. But Jesus forgives. In him and in him alone is life. And there's no place that he can't go. It's to deniers and doubters like you and me that our Lord comes to say, peace be with you. It's to deniers and doubters that our Lord comes and says, put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. St. John's Gospel and the scriptures as a whole are written for the purpose of delivering faith in Christ and life in his name. And that's precisely why Jesus institutes the office of the keys, that special authority given to his church to forgive the sins of those who repent, but to withhold forgiveness from those who do not repent. Yes, withhold forgiveness. That's the death part. But locked doors don't keep Jesus out. He goes to his beloved children. Jesus breathes his authority upon those fearful disciples to go out and forgive and retain sin. That's the business of the church, to carry out that ministry of what Jesus came to do. He came for sinners. He was conceived and born for sinners. He suffered and died on the cross for sinners. He rose from the dead for sinners. He died and rose for you, to forgive you. There's no reason to deny your sins, justify them, weasel your way out of them, or pretend they don't exist. There's absolutely no reason to hold on to them, to continue living in them, or actually dying in them. There's no reason to be afraid of them, as if Jesus couldn't or won't forgive you. Dear saints, your risen Lord has put a pastor in place for you, not to drudge up your sins, not to judge you, but to forgive you. Repent. Go to your pastor, bring your fears, bring your doubts, bring your sinful flesh with which you struggle. Confess your sins and let them all go. 
Jesus died for them. Jesus forgives them. He forgives you. His wounded hands and feet, his side, are his testimony to you that sin is indeed real. But he bore it all upon himself at the cross for you. Those scars that he bears for all eternity, even after his resurrection, are real scars. He still bears them. He bears them for you. And now by his suffering, by his death, you are forgiven. By his wounds, you are healed. The water, the blood, and the Spirit testify. The water with which you were baptized, the blood Jesus gives you together with his body at his altar. These all testify to the very reality of your sin. But sin forgiven. Forgiven in and by Jesus. The fruits of Good Friday and Easter now come to you through those precious means of grace. And the Lord puts your pastor in place to see that you receive them and to see to it that you are forgiven. That's even the goal of the binding key. Jesus forgives. The church is where dried up, lifeless bones are given new life. The church is where you are born of God. The church is where you receive His victory that overcomes the world. The church is where faith is bestowed. Faith that receives His victory. Faith that clings to life. His life. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Jesus is the Son of God, the one who came by water in the blood, who comes even now to forgive you. Sin dead, fear gone, doubt done for, you forgiven. Peace be with you. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. 